Welcome to St. Stephen Lutheran Church in Williamsburg, Virginia for our June 28th Sunday worship service. Our bulletin can be found on our website or perhaps you have a worship book at home. We pray during our century in music that you become aware of the Holy Spirit's presence with you this day. one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace our sins are forgiven let us live now in hope for hope does not disappoint because god's love has been poured into our hearts through the holy spirit amen our gathering hymn is number 453 
Jeremiah. The prophet Jeremiah spoke to the prophet Hananiah in the presence of the priests and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. And the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. 
May the Lord do so. May the Lord fulfill the words that you have prophesied and bring back to this place from Babylon the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles. But listen now to this word that I speak in your hearing and in the hearing of all the people. The prophets who preceded you and me from ancient times prophesied war, famine, and pestilence against many countries and great kingdoms. As for the prophet who prophesies peace, when the word of that prophet comes true, then it will be known that the Lord has truly sent the prophet, the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. exercise dominion in your mortal bodies to make you obey their passions. No longer present your members to sin as instruments of wickedness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and present your members to God as instruments of righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under law, but under grace. What then? Should we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness? But thanks be to God that you, having once been slaves of sin, have become obedient from the heart to the form of teaching to which you were entrusted, and that you, having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to greater and greater iniquity, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness for sanctification. When you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. So what advantage did you then get from the things of which you are now ashamed? The end of those things is death. 
But now that you have been freed from sin and enslaved to God, the advantage you get is sanctification. The end is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Be to God. Our gospel acclamation is hymn number 172. who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, grace and peace be with you this day. During a game of catch one afternoon, Bobby asked his dad, is there a God? His dad, Mike, panicked for a bit. Several answers ran through his mind and he finally spoke his truth. I don't know, Bobby. The boy was not deterred. If there is a God, how would you know him? Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, Jesus told his apostles, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Jesus was concluding his instruction to them before he sent them out on their mission. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me. In other words, we are the face of Jesus to people. Whoever welcomes us not only welcomes Jesus, but they also will know God. Rephrasing Bobby's question, how would people know God if they know you? What comes into your mind when you think about this? Sometimes I think I'd be in trouble you might be thinking about helping to prepare meals for those with no permanent home or volunteering to drive people to their appointment with their doctor. And Jesus does charge us to do these things. But this question is more complex than that. To be Jesus to others means that our relationships, our conversations, and our work should reflect the values and principles he taught. What then of our prejudices, our exclusions, and our grudges? Do we realize what it is about us that people see when we call ourselves Christian? We're called to represent God like Jeremiah in our first reading, not the bullfrog, 
although he did share a cup with others. Jeremiah the prophet was called eccentric by some. I prefer to think of him as appealing to multi-sensory ways of learning. If you don't know the difference between Jeremiah the bullfrog and Jeremiah the prophet, you probably need to spend time a little bit differently. In 594 BCE, Babylonian armies had destroyed the Jerusalem temple and taken leaders and others into exile. Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and his powerful army would be used by God to change the hearts and wills of God's defeated people. For visual learners, and to demonstrate his point, Jeremiah wore a yoke around his neck. Submit to the yoke of Babylon, he cried. Hananiah, who was also a prophet, took one look at Jeremiah in his crazy yoke, ripped it off his body and said to the people, don't worry people, God told me that everything's going to be okay. Two prophets, both claiming to be speaking the words that God gave to them, both saying opposing things. One is a true prophet, the other is false. Whom are we to believe? How do we recognize a false prophet? How do we hear God's true voice above the cacophony of worldly voices? Sometimes we only recognize a prophet in hindsight. Have you heard of the Millerites? No, not those who like to consume beer. The Millerites followed William Miller, who said Christ would return on October 22nd, 1844. After they awoke on October 23rd and found life as usual, William's flock left him. Some of those who claim to speak for God want to assure us that God loves us so much, everything will just go the way we want. They say God desires for us to have the biggest and the best, and all we need to do is send them a vow of faith. Some people think that Christians are called to make people feel good, but we are the ones called to tell God's truth. And sometimes the truth will spark anger and opposition, as in Jeremiah's case. It's both humbling and daunting to know we are the answer to Bobby's question. We are the ones who show God to the world even if that means causing upset. It's not always easy to know what God wants us to say or do. Things are not always distinctly left or right, up or down. Sometimes there are no easy answers, but we can open ourselves to God. We need to have a deep relationship with God if we expect to discern God's will. Have you ever had a friend that you know so well that you can finish each other's sentences? Someone you can tell what they are thinking simply by looking into their face? This cannot happen with a stranger. It happens when we hold a person so close in our soul that the beat of our hearts and the rise and fall of our breath rhythmically align. It happens when we sit silently in each other's presence. It's the same way with God. Spending time with God cultivates open hearts and ears to hear God's truth versus the world's truth. The word of God must be deeply rooted in us to hear the still small voice of God, we must at times sit quietly, immersed in God's presence. Spending time in prayer and worship, sitting with God's word and scripture and relishing our relationships with others are all ways to deepen our covenantal relationship with God. 
in our baptism, these are the promises we make. Whoever welcomes us, not only welcomes Jesus, but they will also know God through us. Addressing Bobby's question, how would people know God if they know you? We are, as Luther said, both sinner and saint. I am not, we are not worthy. Only God's grace makes us so. In the name of Christ, giver of all grace, amen. Our hymn of the day is hymn number 779. Thank you. 
the world and to seek your face. God, embodied in a human life, we believe and trust in you. Jesus, our brother, born of the woman Mary, you confronted the proud and the powerful and welcomed as your friends those of no account. Holy wisdom of God, firstborn of creation, you emptied yourself of power and became foolishness for our sake. You labored with us upon the cross and have brought us forth to the hope of the resurrection. Help us to commit ourselves to struggle against evil and to choose life. God, life-giving spirit, spirit of healing and comfort, of integrity and truth, we believe and trust in you. Warm wind spirit, brooding over creation, rushing wind and Pentecostal fire, help us to commit ourselves to work with you and renew our world. Call into unity with one another and the whole creation. Let us pray for our shared world. God, our world needs your help and guidance. Give wisdom to our leaders so that they may act for the benefit of all. Help them to lead with dignity and compassion. Well, pride and arrogance. Give them grace to see humanity in the people they are serving. Show them how to be truthful and honest. Lord, in your mercy, you hear our prayer. Where hearts are fearful and constricted, grant courage and hope where anxiety is infectious and widening, grant peace and reassurance. Where distrust twists our thinking, grant healing and illumination. Where spirits are weakened, grant strengthened dreams. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you promised to be with us through life and death, heights and depths. We pray for your presence with those who are worn thin from the challenges of life, from caregiving and from illness in mind, body, or soul. We live to you for your care, Pam, Debbie, Linda, Kristen, Arnie, Evelyn, Lynn, Linda, and others in our heart. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, receive these prayers and those we have that are too deep for words through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. During our offering music, recall God's abundant gifts given simply through God's grace. Christ is born, the 
is with 